Emotions are some of the strongest forces found within beings living on planet Earth. They dictate nearly everything you do and think. Some of the greatest actions done by people we know today were done based on their emotions. Logic may have its place in the world, but I more personally resonate with emotions. I seek out media that feature moments of powerful emotions. Moments where the protagonist is at their highest high, their lowest low, and sometimes in that creamy middle. But one game that hits these notes for me in just the right way, one game I accidentally neglected to mention during my 2018 video having played and loved, is Life is Strange. Life is Strange is exactly what the box says. It's about life being very strange in a very specific, special ways. The game itself is very strange, being developed by the French studio Don't Nod and published by Square Enix for international release. The game follows Max Caulfield, a student at Blackwell Academy, having just recently moved back to Oregon from Seattle, Washington. Everything's going well until you spot local bully Nathan Prescott trying to harass Max's old friend Chloe Price for money that's owed, eventually pulling out a gun and killing her. In the moment leading up to the murder, Max discovers she has a special power, reversing time and becoming fully aware of the fact that she's currently inhabiting a point in time she's already lived through. The rest of the game is her adventures with Chloe and other classmates and friends such as Kate Marsh, Warren Graham, Victoria Chase, Chloe's mother Joyce and her stepfather David Matson, and many others as you try to uncover what happened to various girls disappearing in the coastal town of Arcadia Bay, including one Rachel Amber. Life is Strange is episodic, meaning that every chapter is one entire adventure that has a beginning, middle, and end, as well as standout moments. Nearly all of these moments feature someone in danger or a revelation that can grip at the heartstrings of normal players. I'll be discussing some of these moments with detail, so if you still have not played Life is Strange, this is your spoiler warning. You do not need that strong of a PC to play it if that's your preferred method, and the first episode is free on all available platforms. In episode 1, your big moment of emotion comes in the very beginning. Once you leave your classroom, you're free to roam the halls of the school building. Your main goal is to reach the bathroom, but there's nothing stopping you from looking at everything and everyone, from various signs and notes, to your locker, to even fellow classmates who are seen talking to others. This would already be immersive on its own, but the song accompanying it to all of you by Sid Matters makes this a beginning to an adventure you won't soon forget. In the second episode, it's revealed that Kate Marsh, an adorable young Christian woman, was possibly drugged at a party and was seen recorded doing illicit, unchristianly things. The constant humiliations and rumors being spread eventually lead her to the decision to take her own life. Due to an inconvenient event occurring which results in your time reversing being unable to function, you must figure out what to say to Kate in order to properly save her life. It's not guaranteed that you'll succeed, and when you do, it's an instant weight being lifted off your shoulders. Thank you. 
Skipping ahead to what might be the most difficult decision in the game, the final episode ends with Max needing to make a decision that will dictate how the final events of the game will play out. You've been on this long, emotional journey with your friend and possible crush Chloe. You realize in a nightmare sequence that the storm that threatens to completely decimate Arcadia Bay is the result of your time powers wrecking the flow of time and that constantly rewinding time to save Chloe's life has you abandoning timelines and creating new ones that has severe ramifications to both reality and your psyche. You must make a decision. Will you go back to when this whole adventure began and let Chloe get shot by Nathan, thus fixing the timeline while also making sure that the right people suffer the consequences of their actions? Or do you allow Chloe to live, thus letting the entire town of Arcadia Bay suffer? The needs of the many versus the needs of the few. Despite one of them seeming like the correct option on the outset, having gone through so much with Chloe makes it much more difficult than one would think. Even when you think you've made the right decision, you can't help but watch events play out and feel like you made the wrong decision. One last moment worth mentioning, one that hit me in the lowest and deepest pit in my stomach as I came across it, comes at the halfway point of episode 4. Through various scenes of sleuthing, you finally discover where Rachel Amber has been, what may have happened to her, and eventually where she ended up. Going back to the junkyard you and Chloe frequent, you discover that she was buried in a garbage bag, having been dead since before the beginning of the game. Chloe weeps as you're left to wonder how this happened to someone like Rachel Amber and who could have actually done this. What made this moment even more powerful to me is the fact that the scene played out slightly differently. My boyfriend's computer suddenly glitched the game and all voice and sound effects were gone and I just had to silently watch these events happen with the music in the background. And if you know me, you know that scenes that play out with only music and no sounds hit me right where I live. So this was much more impactful than before. The most common argument against emotional narratives in media is the fact that there are some flaws that stick out to some people if they're not affected by the emotions found within. The flaw of Life is Strange, unfortunately, is some of the writing involving characters in certain events. There is no context given to why Max has her powers, and there are many, many instances where the localization team was trying way, way too hard to sound current and modern and ends up sounding really lame and making the game dated by the time it came out. I can't believe American I still have this pencil case. I should upgrade to the 21st weeks. century. But I like it old school. Wrong. You got hella cash. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. 
That is a tasty plasma. Maybe I could sneak in and watch Final Fantasy Spirits Within. I don't care what anybody says, that's one of the best sci-fi films ever made. But these are things that are possible to look past. I wouldn't be talking about it if I wasn't able to. So many other people were able to, and that's all that matters. Life is Strange is not perfect, no game really is, but it does its job and personally I believe it did it with flying colors. It didn't want to change the gaming industry, it didn't want to be anything other than an adventure game with a fun gimmick. What it became was much more, it was an emotional narrative. Do you remember when you first saw a movie as a child, say maybe Snow White or even The Lion King? Remember how everything wrapped up with little to no explanation? Remember how you wondered as a child how everything was so quickly resolved by the end of the story? You don't, because it presented itself in a way that makes you so happy once it's all over. You became invested, and once the conflict has been resolved, you're as overjoyed as the characters involved. I feel like Life is Strange is that, at least for me and a few others. This has been Rising Superstar, and I love you. A very, very special thanks to The Alpha J Show, a fellow YouTuber who focuses more on Western cartoons, and Twitter user DynamoToon for helping me make this end card. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to be using it for as long as I make videos. If you have an idea for a video I could make, donate to my coffee. All it takes is $6. You and I can chat and figure out exactly what to do. Thank you, and have a good day.